In this video, we're going to make selecting this car really easy. And then once we do that, we can make our adjustments just as easily using the new object mask option within DaVinci Resolve. Let's take a look. In this video, I want to try a couple different clips and varying levels of difficulty within the clips. So in this first clip, and by the way, all the clips are from ArtGrid. If you're interested in two free months on top of a yearly subscription, check my link in the description below. You'll notice in this particular clip, the car is driving down this road. It's going in and out of shadows and it's making turns. So let's see how well the effect does on this particular clip. The first thing that we're going to do is come over to the magic mask area and we have two options. Right now it's set to person. Obviously in this case, we don't want that. So we're going to change it to object. Once we click on that, we can draw over what we want. In this case, we want to change the color of the car in this particular example. So make sure you have the plus sign selected and we'll draw a line over a significant part of the car there. If you check on the left-hand side within that area, there's a stroke one that's in there because we've only drawn the one line. And then in order to see this, we have to come all the way to the right and choose the mask overlay. Now, anything in that red color is what we've chosen. If we zoom into the footage, you'll notice that it has selected parts of the ground Obviously we don't need that. So just so we can teach DaVinci Resolve what to look for and what not to look for, we'll choose the eyedropper with the negative sign next to it. You'll notice in this case, it's a red line as opposed to that blue line, and it's added an additional stroke down in the bottom left. It also selected part of the tires. Now in this case, we're going to just change a particular color on the car. Because the tires don't match the paint of the car, I'm not overly concerned that it's also selected the tires. Down here, we have the different options for tracking. This one is one that will track backwards and forwards, which is great in this case because we've selected a frame within the clip that's in the middle of the clip. But if you are on the first clip, you can choose to track forward. You have an option to track backward. You can track forward one frame. Now keep in mind, if you want to pause tracking, you don't want to hit the stop button on the footage up top. You want to hit the pause button within the magic mask area. Let's hit that track option and see how well this does. What you may have noticed is that now it is selecting the tires, which is actually good because what I think DaVinci has done here is determined that this is an automobile and selected the entire car. Again, I'm not overly concerned about this because I'm not going to be affecting the car as a whole. In other words, I'm not adjusting the brightness or anything like that. So whereas I didn't necessarily want it or need it to select the tires, it's okay in this case, and I think it's pretty impressive that it determined that this was a car. As I mentioned earlier on, this is going in and out of shadow with the shadow of the trees going through the window within the car. So that's not affecting the track, which I find impressive. Also keep in mind that I'm using the faster quality as opposed to the better quality. And I have noticed that the better quality is more precise, but by using the faster quality, although it's not perfect, I think it's doing a fantastic job. So once the track is complete, you'll see that blue line go across that row in the bottom and there will be that green check mark. From here, in order for us to make use of this, what we can do is right click in our node area and choose to add a, another serial node. So once that new node is created, what we want to do is grab a line from the blue portion of the first node into the blue portion of the following node. In case we're curious to see what it's done, what I'll do is choose the option for highlight. We'll deselect the bottom where it shows the mask overlay. And as long as we have the right node selected, we can see what we've keyed out. I'll scroll through this footage. And as I mentioned, for the most part, it's done a really good job. There are some issues underneath the car. Again, based on what I wanna do, it doesn't matter. Having said that, not only do you have the option to choose better if you prefer for a more precise selection, you have all those options underneath. And these are things that you see with most keying operations within DaVinci Resolve. You have the clean white, clean black, and all those other options listed there. So you can really refine your selection if that's exactly what you need. Now we've keyed everything out, let's go ahead and make the adjustment. Of course, we wanna make sure that we have that node selected and I want to change the color of this car. In this case, I'm not going to use a qualifier what I intend to do is come over to the curve section and I'm going to use hue versus hue. And in this case, I'm going to just choose the red preset. And then what I can do is take that point, move it up and down and our color will adjust. We can have it be purple or orange, move it down to green. And actually that's what I think I'm going to do. And if I scroll through the footage, we now have a green car that is driving down this road. As I mentioned before, it hasn't affected the ground or anything. It hasn't affected the tires. So overall, this was a really effective track and it took a little while for me to explain it to you, but overall the process is extremely quick. 
Now the brake lights on the back of the car were also red. We can come down to the window section and track a window to exclude that from our footage. We're not going to do that here because I just wanted to show you this for demonstration purposes. With the second clip, we're going to do exactly the same things. In this case, I want to track her bicycle. Of course, we want to make sure the magic mask is set to object. We want to make sure there's a plus sign next to our dropper and I will draw a line on a part of the bicycle. We can toggle the mask overlay. In this case, it didn't select all the wheels, so I will add additional lines. That one additional stroke did select the rest of the wheel, and now I am going to draw a line over the frame in the middle of the bicycle. And I'll continue to add more strokes so we can select the rest of the bicycle. Now, as with the car footage, once you play through the footage, it appears that it does a really good job of determining the object that you selected. Now, I paused the tracking temporarily just to show you that there are little blue lines that show you which frame you created those strokes on. So if you needed to make a modification that isn't being corrected by tracking through the footage, you can choose this icon right here and that will get you back to that part. Now you can see all the strokes that you've made. There's also an option for, to go to the first frame of the tracked area. And then of course on the right hand side, there's one to go to the last frame of the tracked area. I've continued to track through the rest of it. Now we have that blue line and that check mark to indicate that the track has been completed. And scrubbing through the footage, the track looks really good. It doesn't appear to be picking up that grass or any of the outside objects or even the ground right up front. I did notice that some of the selection is on her foot. If I choose the option with the minus sign and select her foot, it does get rid of that selection, but it also removes the blue line on our overall track for any frames that follow it. So this is just something you wanna keep in mind in case you want to make adjustments. It's best practice to fix something early on, otherwise you're going to have to keep tracking everything all the way through again. As we did before, once the track is complete, we add a second serial node, we connect up all our connections. So we want to connect our blue key from one node to the key on the second node. We'll choose our highlight mode again. Right now I have it with the black and white option, and now you can visualize the key. I don't think I'm going to change the color of the bicycle in this case. What I might just do is either lighten it or darken it. Now there are other applications for this particular effect that don't have to do with either Luma or any of the chroma options, changing color, hue, any of that. Because remember what you're doing here is creating a key. So anything that you would do with any other key, you can also do with these. Now this particular footage is a bit tricky. What we can do here is put a stroke onto the basketball it's done a fairly good job, but what I'll do is select the part that seems to have gone outside the basketball. What happens in this particular footage is our subject in the yellow shirt ends up going in front of the basketball. And unfortunately, DaVinci Resolve isn't able to determine that it's the same object once it is obstructed for a frame or two. So what we can do here is once the object is back in the frame, and I will draw a stroke there, now we've selected our object again, and we can track through our footage. In this case, it's going to leave the bottom of the frame and then come back up. Once again, we have to select the object. But the good thing here is that none of these strokes get erased. So in other words, as I showed you before, all those little blue lines on the bottom are the frames where you created those strokes. Once again, just remember that you wanna do these in a particular order because any frames that follow any new strokes that you make will have to be tracked again. So if you scrub back in the footage and then make an additional stroke there, you'll have to track forward so that we have a blue line on that overall track. In this case, I changed the color of the object again. Once we have a good track, you'll see that it follows it all the way through the footage. Now this is one of many new features that they implemented in Resolve 18. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in watching some of my other videos, click on one of them on the screen right now. Follow me over on Twitter if you want to chat, and I'll see you in the next video.